Hi, I'm Jim Wright, and I'm going to talk about permissions on the Temple Israel website. Website permissions are for authors, and they enable authors to be able to find and edit material that's on the site. Author access is gated by their login. Permissions are attached to the login, and they can have one or more permissions, which give them the ability to edit different things on the site itself. What's important is the permissions enable viewing, creating, and editing articles, and it simplifies the process by making them easy to find. You basically navigate to the page that you want to change, and then in most cases you edit it in place. Each author can be given a role defined by one or more per permissions. Uh, this is not a hardwired thing in the system. It's a way to think about grouping permissions so that people can do what they need to do. Different roles may share permissions. More than one person can have the same permission. And more than one person can have a role, which is a collection of permissions. Author permissions, uh, what are they? First of all, you have the front page publisher permission, and that's to edit the announcement area. You have a TI Times publisher's permission, and that's to create and edit TI Times. The TI Bulletin Publishers permission enables authors to upload and publish the TI Bulletin. The Database Viewer permission enables authors to view the Foresight databases. And then there's five additional permissions, each one of which gives access to all the pages and menu items under a particular menu item in the main menu. That's About Us, Worship, Community, Learning, and Media. So that's access to each of those areas. Let's look at the notion of role in the system. On the left, I have, in this table, I have all the permissions for the system. Across the top, I have a series of made-up roles. They're arbitrary. So there's a TI Times role, a TI Bulletin role, a community coordinator role, an educational coordinator role, a media coordinator role, a rabbi role, and an office role. So, who can access the front page? Well, the front page permission is one that the rabbi role has and that the office role has. Uh, TI Times permission is owned by the guy who has the TI Times responsibility and the TI Times role. Similarly, TI Bulletin permission is possessed by the holder of the role for the TI Bulletin, and so it goes for each of the areas. If you are the community coordinator, you have the community publisher's permission so that you can access those areas. Again, notice that the community coordinator may be backed up by other people that have the community uh, publisher role, and that could be, for example, the rabbi and the office. Now let's go look at the system. I'm going to log in as one of the users. The user is going to be test user one. The permission that he has is access to the About Us area. Before we go to About Us, let's look and see what's happened to the author's gateway. The author's gateway, now that he's logged in, has not only the default tools, which are always available there, but has three additional tools. One is Publication Guidelines, which are the Temple Guidelines for Publications. One is JCE Editor Help, which basically defines all the icons used in the editor. And then there's My Profile, which allows you to see your profile and to edit it. You can change your email address, you can change your login name, you can do things like that. Now let's take test user one and let's go on to one of the pages for the area for which he has permissions. And we'll look at the our rabbi page. 
On the Our Rabbi page, you notice in the upper left-hand corner that there's an icon which is grayed out but visible. And if we put our cursor over that, we see that, in fact, it will have some text. Edit article, published Friday, 28th this October 2011, written by Rabbi Barnett Brickner. So if you see that icon, that means that you as an author have access to that article to edit it in place. And all you need to do is click the icon. When you click the icon, the edit page comes up. You notice the article is in the editor, titles there, and some other information about it. The publishing information, typically you leave the same. Uh, you don't want to change the category usually. And the access, you typically remain at public because in in-place editing, usually you edit and save. And uh, it's suitable for it to show up. When you're finished, you have two buttons in the upper right-hand side. One is a save button, which saves what you've edited and will publish it if the access is set to public. You can also cancel if you want to throw away whatever it is you've edited. Be sure to either save or cancel when you leave the editor. If you don't, you will lock the editor and nobody else will be able to edit it until you come back. Uh, if there are other people who have access, that's not nice. And so do maintain the practice of saving or canceling when you uh, quit the editor. So we haven't changed anything. Let's cancel. We have just completed the basic editing and modification step that you will use for almost all of the content on the site. Uh, it's very straightforward to do. It's simply you go to the page, you click on the icon if you have permission to do so, and then you will go edit it and save it in place. But now let's go and look at some other kinds of content where there are additional wrinkles. And so first I want to log out. I go to the login button, hit that. It knows I'm logged in, so it asks me if I want to log out. I go ahead and click the button. And shortly we are out of there. I'm going to log in as another user, and this one, for the sake of our uh, discussion, will have all of the privileges in the system so that I can show you what additional things will show up to you as a user if you have those permissions. So we go to the author's gateway and we log in. The new user is test user. If we look at Authors Gateway for Test User, we notice that once he's logged in, there are a bunch of new tools. There's a new Create Articles, which has things like new Front Page Article, new TI Times Article, new TI Bulletin Article. Those are needed for the areas in the system that can have multiple articles. You have to be able to create new articles. And so uh, these are the uh, links that will show up that will allow you to do that. Note that they only see the links that are, are, that are for capabilities that you have in your permissions. If you don't have permission, you won't see those links. There's also a submit area. Uh, this is the kind of thing that will be present in the author's gateway for people who have the media permission. You can add a photo. You can add a new video. You can add additional audio. You can add a new podcast. The last area uh, is view databases, uh, and this lists all four databases that there are online forms for in the system. And uh, we're going to start there and take a look at one of those. So we have the view databases permission. We go down and look at the membership database by selecting it. When it comes up, you'll see that there are a series of records, one line per record. Some information summarizes uh, 
the record, so in this case it's the name, email address, home phone, and the mobile for people who have submitted uh, a request for membership, and also the time frame they'd like to be contacted. If we click on the username, the, the name of the person who's submitted, we come up with a complete record of their submission. And it has the label that was on the original form, and then their response to it. First name, test, date of birth, 12-7-1941, and so forth, for all the information that they have submitted for their membership. If we go back to the display of the records, you notice there for each record also has a download PDF link. And what that brings up is exactly the same information we saw by clicking on their name, but in a PDF format so you can download it to your machine. So that's how the databases work. Again, these databases may have material that is uh, private, so we want to restrict that permission on a need-to-know basis. Let's look at another capability that our user has here. So we go again to the author's gateway, and this time we're going to look at things that you create new articles for. So I'm going to go to the Create Articles, and I'm going to create a new TI Times article. In the interest of time, I won't actually do this, but I'll just walk through the process. When you hit that link for Create TI Times Article, you come up with a new page. The new page you can put in the title, you can put an alias, which is the title usually with dashes in it. It's a system thing. Uh, you type in the text you want, any pictures you want, whatever's going to go into that TI Times edition. You leave the category as TI Times. That's how the system knows that it belongs to that area. And typically, you'll leave your access at public, and it will be published when you save it. Again, you're either going to save what you've done or you're going to cancel and throw it away. Be sure to do one of the two so that other people have access to the article as well. So in this case, again, we haven't really created an article. I cancel. So that's the kind of thing that you use the create article for. How does that work in terms of the site? Well, let's go to the TI Times area. Notice that as a user that has the TI Times permissions, the TI Times person can go ahead and edit an article that's already there. The article they just finished, in fact, will appear there. So this would be the article we had just edited. And if you want to do additional editing, you can just go and edit it using this, the way you do it any other article on the system. Notice that the article that was there before you published the new article is now in the More Article section. So you can also go back, and when you click on that and bring it up, that also is editable if you need to change something in an older article as well. So that's the typical kind of case where you create an article. And we do that for the front page, the TI Times, the TI Bulletin, uh, and uh, a number of other places on the site where more than one article uh, can be used on a page. Let's go and see one last area, or one last example uh, of the permissions. So we go to the Authors Gateway again for this user, who can sort of do everything. We go down to, this time, to Submit Media, and we'll do one example of submitting new media. So let's go submit a photograph. When you go to the Submit Photograph area, you come up with a display which captures information pertinent to the media area. And you know, if you've looked at the Photos area in the Media section, photographs are put into galleries. And so you have a list of the galleries that have been created. Note, you can create a new gallery through the New Category button. We won't show that, but uh, you can create your own. Uh, gallery. And if you're going to put a photograph into an existing gallery, you go to the Manage Images 
link that's associated with that gallery. So I'm going to go to the top Shabbat area, which has four photographs, and I'm going to look at the Manage Images. Now, my goal is to simply add another image to that group. Again, I'm not going to, in the interest of time, I'm not going to do it, but I'll show you how, what it's done so you get a feel for what the process is. You come up with this widget, and you notice the widget has a button for Add Files. If you click that button, it brings up your file manager, and you can go select uh, files that you might want to upload to that site on your machine. Uh, and you'd start the upload once you've got the files identified. Another way you can do it is you can open your file manager and simply drag the file icon over and drop it in this area. And then when you've dropped over the ones you care about, then you can hit the Start Upload button. That's all you need to do to add photographs to an existing gallery uh, in the Photographs area. Now, what do you do next? Once you've added the photographs, they'll appear in this list. As, for example, you can see the photographs that are already there. Notice that it's possible to add a caption to the photograph. You can add uh, additional information, comment on the photograph. You can rotate the photograph if it uh, is a vertically oriented photograph and it loaded as a horizontal photograph. You can turn it. And then you, when you're ready, you can publish it. You click the publish, and uh, it'll show up on the website. If you don't click the publish, it won't show up. Uh, for your convenience, it gives you the number of hits, how many people have actually seen that photograph. And you can change the ordering of photographs in the slideshow and in the thumbnails. These little buttons allow you to move that item either down, if it's the first one, or up and down, if it's in the middle, so that they come up in the order you'd like them to appear. So that is editing a photograph. A little different process, but still pretty straightforward. And that's what a media uh, permission would grant an author, the ability to do that kind of thing. So we're finished here, and we'll log out. Primary takeaways are there's a very simple process for editing material that's already on the site. In particular, articles are very straightforward. Your access and ability to do that is through your login and the permissions attached to that login. People who have certain permissions uh, can do additional things such as upload and manage media, or they can get access to things like the databases. So, Think about the permissions that you need for your access to the site and uh, then go about getting those permissions so you can do the things you need to on the Temple Israel site.